Hello. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. It marked the start of Holy Week, which includes observance of significant events in the life of Jesus Christ, leading to his trial, crucifixion, and resurrection. Each event offers vital insight into our calling as communities of disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's take time this week to prayerfully ponder the movements of Jesus toward the cross and beyond. Next Sunday, the presidency with other world church leaders will participate in an online Easter worship. I invite you to join us for this worldwide celebration of Christ's resurrection. Details are on the World Church website. We are also recognizing several significant church history events. 200 years ago, in the spring of 1820, a teenage boy, Joseph Smith Jr., experienced his first vision in a wooded grove near his home in New York. The vision began a series of divine encounters that shaped the nature and mission of the church, including our ongoing call to be a prophetic people. Also, Monday, April 6, marked the 190th anniversary of the church's organization in 1830. It's another reason to celebrate as we continue our remarkable journey of responding to God's call. So, how are you getting along? What are you discovering about yourself and others during this time? The other day, I had a socially distanced outdoor conversation with a neighbor. I hadn't spoken with him at length for a while, and it was good to chat. He seemed merely to want to have somebody to talk to. People are hungry for real-time conversations. Listening is always ministry, especially during these times. During this stay-at-home time, I've been reading a stack of books I'd wanted to finish. One book is A Hidden Wholeness, The Journey Toward an Undivided Life by Parker J. Palmer. I recommend it. The title of chapter 3 is Spiritual DNA. In it, Palmer offers this insight. We are born with a seed of selfhood that contains the spiritual DNA of our uniqueness. An encoded birthright knowledge of who we are, why we are here, and how we are related to others. Thomas Merton called it true self. Buddhists call it original nature or big self. Quakers call it the inner teacher or inner light. Hasidic Jews call it spark of the divine. Humanists call it identity and integrity. In popular parlance, people often call it soul. I've been reflecting on the nature of soul this past week. Doctrine and Covenants section 85, paragraph 3b, speaks of the light which is in all things, which giveth life to all things. This section also calls it the light of Christ. I think that passage is speaking about an essential aspect of soul. Now back to Palmer. He suggests that we can identify or name some functions of the soul without presuming to penetrate its mystery. His list of functions is very insightful. The soul wants to keep us rooted in the ground of our own being, resisting the tendency of other faculties like the intellect and ego to root us from who we are. Next, the soul wants to keep us connected to the community in which we find life, for it understands that relationships are necessary 
if we are to thrive. Next, the soul wants to tell us the truth about ourselves, our world, and the relation between the two, whether the truth is easy or hard to hear. And finally, the soul wants to give us life and wants us to pass that gift along to become life givers in a world that deals too much death. As quoted in Palmer, poet Mary Oliver writes, This is the first wildest and wisest thing I know, that the soul exists and that it is built entirely out of attentiveness. For the homebound, this can be a time to deepen our understanding of the principle of Sabbath as an opportunity to do some soul tending. Sabbath is about trusting that God's love for us is not based on what we do, but on who we are. We are loved as much in our being as in our doing. Sabbath is about taking time to pause, rest, and pay attention to God's watch care over us and creation. Sabbath is about turning our attentiveness to what is most important. I know that everyone's situation is not the same. Because of their responsibilities, some are working harder than usual. For them, we offer prayerful support and gratitude. For others, I hope this time of interrupted routines will provide more opportunities to practice Sabbath. Our souls will be grateful.